Good evening, San Luis Obispo. Another day in paradise. Another great day to live the run. Thanks for joining us on Living the Run. I'm your host, Rex Stevens. I can't say I'm alongside the colorful, the humorous, uh, the often not too serious Paul Tarek. He's missing tonight. He had kid duty. And so uh, the room, Max, feels a little bit, uh, little bit bare without the big energy of Paul Tarek. It's always a little bare without Paul. <laughs> Regardless of missing the Olympian, we will, uh, we're going to have an awesome show tonight. We got uh, one of my favorite topics to talk about, and that's health, uh, health and fitness as it relates to kids. Uh, we're going to talk children's health, and uh, one of the reasons for that is, is we got some great folks stopping in today. Uh, from the Miracle Miles group, uh, Miracle Miles for Kids will be going uh, in just a, t- a week and a half. Uh, we're talking May 12th. Uh, great race out there in, in Morro Bay. and um, So we're going to talk about a little children's health and fitness issues before and, and get those guys in here. And we'll just get, get some heartwarming stories for you. But the first thing I want to do tonight, uh, you know, I kind of, Paul gave me a, a tough deal. Uh, he g- gave me some some flack that first week for not doing it right. And then last week, we didn't quite do it right either. And that is to give a special thanks to our producer, Max Woodcock. Max is <laughs> Max is in the place with us tonight, and uh, we just haven't been giving him his due. And the reality is, is as much as I love radio and have always loved radio, uh, I don't really know all that much about radio. And uh, thanks to Max, this show runs pretty darn good. So, Max, thank you. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me here. It's always good to spread the word of living the run out to the Central Coast. It absolutely is. You know, when we're talking uh, health and fitness today, you know, I just want to make a quick disclaimer when we talk kids' health. You know, we're not your child's pediatrician or their primary physician. Uh, None of what we're going to say is meant to diagnose or treat your kids. And, you know, heck, we're just running a health and fitness show hoping to bring awareness uh, to, to major health and fitness issues. And the reality is, is is that a lot of these things happening in today's environment are affecting our kids. And so I think we can make better decisions. And uh, with the ultimate goal that Living the Run has always had is, is to make for a help, happier and healthier community. And so, uh, you know, I'd love to say that <laughs> when you look at uh, the way we look at uh, health and fitness is that we're, we're careful observers, we're, we're critical thinkers, uh, maybe voracious readers. But when it comes to health and fitness, uh, you know, the reality is, is that description just doesn't fit Paul. And so uh, we're going to have to come up with a new one uh, just just simply to uh, to fit Mr. Paul Tarek. But anyway, Paul's not here to defend himself, and um, we'll, we'll get going. But, you know, the, the, the fact is, is uh, today is his health care is confusing. Um, you know, uh, Max, it's just amazing some of the claims that we see out there today. Uh, terminology is goofy, hard words to understand, sometimes uh, create a little fear. We got all kinds of wild claims going on in different books. You see a new author every week telling you about some new new trend. Don't eat fat. Don't eat carbohydrates. Uh, you know, you look on the front cover of a Fruit Loops box and it says heart healthy. I mean, this stuff is getting crazy. Yeah, that, the cereals absolutely <laughs> drive me crazy. I mean, how you can put any sort of health disclaimer saying that it's good for you on a box of sugar is essentially what they become is nuts and there's a lot of a lot of literature out there that talks about nutritionism science and how it does change every five or so years to where what we thought was great five years ago is terrible today and probably what we think is great for us today will be terrible five years so it's just kind of one of those things you got to roll with the punches and hope you're doing the right thing Absolutely. And that's where, you know, on the Living the Run, we're trying to use sometimes just some basic common sense and some intuition to start to try to decipher between, you know, what is just straight marketing and what actually may uh, enhance our health and fitness. And shoot, I was talking to a patient earlier today that was talking about medications uh, and some of these uh, prescription drug commercials. She said that the one on Lunesta now, those for those of you listeners who have seen this commercial with the butterfly, heck, there's so few words now on it that patients are just walking into doctors offices and asking for the butterfly uh this is <laughs> <laughs> is this is this uh health is health and vitality we're talking about or what but you know the reality is is that some of this terminology some of this different marketing is is causing confusion uh it promotes fear it promotes poor decision making uh probably a recipe for disaster and if, if we can block some of this off for our kids uh we have a, a great chance for the future here what do you think uh, absolutely and i think it starts with the parents you know, you have to and you have to make decisions for a lot of your children because obviously they can't afford to be going out and buying their cereals. They're, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. So a lot of it starts at home with the parents making decisions for their children. You know, you, your kids want the sweet things that taste good, uh, but you know, you got to tell your kids at some point. You know, this is it's going to affect you negatively down the road. 
Absolutely. You know, one thing that I've always thought was very interesting is, is in, in healthcare terminology, sometimes we uh, use some terms that, again, uh, it just aren't average, common, everyday terms. Uh, I remember sitting in a class, in an anatomy class at one time, and the instructor in, in a matter of uh, less than two minutes was describing something on, on a cadaver, and he used the terms cephalad, rostral, cranial, and superior. And the reality was is all those words meant the same thing, but everyone sitting listening was confused. Uh, he was just trying to point towards the head, but he just kept using a different term that nobody commonly uses. And this is the t- stuff that's tough. You know, you get an x-ray back, you get a report back, and it uses some crazy term. My favorite one has always been eczema. You know, everybody knows uh, the eczema there, but nobody knows that eczema <laughs> means a rash of unknown origin. You know, it's a, hey, you've got a rash, but we don't know why the heck you've got a rash. And, and this is, you know, amazing stuff because when you hear you got eczema the first time, you know, it, it sounds like a pretty big condition. Um, and it <laughs> sounds like you've got to be pretty smart to know. And, and these things are tough. Otitis media, you know, this inner ear infection. But, you know, uh, this is, this is uh, <laughs> oftentimes creates fear. You know, and then it becomes tough to make decisions when you uh, you have a little fear. Yeah, I, it, the names of things always sound terrible. I mean, streptococcus for strep throat that's, <laughs> just sounds awful. Like, oh, oh, but but yeah, you know, it's it, a lot of it's just the understanding and getting past some of the jargon that is out there and really getting down to what it's about and how you can go about preventing and solving what you have. Well, absolutely. You know, uh, another thing I've always thought is, is that if it doesn't seem quite right to you, you know, question it and pay a little attention and, and let that get go. I remember one of the first guys to uh, do this uh, in the running world it was really great in the book Born to Run. Uh, things just didn't seem logical to him. When at 30 years old, he was having knee pain without any trauma. And uh, the orthopedist looked at the knee and said, you know, uh, you're 30 years old. Uh, running is, is no longer good for your knees, <laughs> uh, and, and you're just too old for it. So, um, you know, it, it's that kind of thing um, that sometimes you have to take a step back and say, geez, at 30, shouldn't I still be able to run? Shouldn't I still be able to move? I saw a patient just the other day. Man, this guy was great. He says, you know what? I'm turning 60. I'm turning 60 in a month. And I think it's time to turn it up a notch. He'd just come off of a half pipe at Mammoth uh, on his snowboard. And uh, he says, you know, I'm 60 years old. It's really time to get rolling now. And, and he's just, he's got the mindset of moving forward. And he's not going to be limited uh, by that mindset. Yeah, young at heart's great. But, uh, you know, your body isn't always young back on top of you. But <laughs> my grandma, she's like 89 years old. I think maybe just turned 90. Uh, and, and she's the same way. She loves to work out, loves to run. But... Maybe 30 years ago, the doctor said, look, you cannot run anymore on your knees unless you get brand new knees. And she just couldn't afford it at the time. And recently, she hurt herself real bad trying to kick it up a notch at 89, you know. (laughs) I love to hear those stories. Yeah, on her way to 100 for sure. Hey, look, we got a special caller uh, coming in on the line right now. I thought this was a great story. Uh, I heard this story earlier this week uh, from uh, a woman who ran the Boston Marathon. First of all, that's just an amazing accomplishment uh, right off the bat. But uh, she had an absolutely incredible experience on the airport getting ready uh, on her way to come home. And, you know, when she told me the story, uh, the emotion, the exuberance, I I could tell she still almost had chills uh, being able to experience that moment. And so uh, we're going to bring Michelle in here with us. And uh, first of all, say uh, congrats to Michelle and then uh, on, on completing that marathon. But secondly, Michelle, you know, we talked just before and you said, hey, do you think I can do this uh, on the radio? And I said, well, the only thing not to do is, is, is go silent on us. So uh, give, <laughs> give us some of that emotion, <laughs> Michelle. But, uh, you know, give us, a, 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 again, congrats on, on doing that. But give us a, the lowdown on what happened to you at the airport in Boston. I will. Okay, thanks so much, Rex. Um, first of all, Boston was just an amazing experience, just in terms of the camaraderie and, and, and just the recognition of your fellow runner, even just starting at the airport, flying out there. I mean, you'd see these people, and you just knew they were running Boston. You're like, hey, are you going out to Boston? And, yeah, um, talking about sort of what we were hoping for the race, and um, that was really fun, and, and, and the airplane ride with all the runners. Um, so, um, much different than we all expected. It turned out to be 87 degrees, which was just 
steak and hot to run a marathon in and um, slightly different slightly different michelle than what we had here in san Luis. uh yeah, you know at you this had absolutely perfect running weather i know i passed out water on that day i was freezing cold <laughs> but so, i'm not i'm not sensing any, any excuses <laughs> from you right no, no excuses absolutely, absolutely none so <laughs> Steak and hot, and how Boston works is, just a little background, is um, you go out and wait. So the elite runners, um, they're the red bibs, and they, they go off at 10 o'clock. And we had some local runners in that in that elite group, and um, just an amazing group of runners. And then um, after the red bibs go, the white bibs go, and then the blue bibs go. And I was a blue bibber. So um, <laughs> by the time, you know, you sit there in this in this staging area, and by the time I was ready to run, the temperature had just soared. So um ran the race. I was proud of myself. I stuck with it, you know, just ways of being overwhelmed. And I'm like, okay, I can, I can pull this off. Um, so I was pretty proud after. I, and I, I can pull I, this off. I'm a blue bibber. I'm a blue, I'm a blue bibber. bibber. I can do this. <laughs> we are scrappy and proud. We fought hard to get here. And so I, I um, after the race, the, the next day I head to the airport. And I'm in that food court of the airport. And and hanging out by myself before the plane, and I see this guy sitting in there, and um, he just looks like a runner. I'm like, there we go, and he's wearing a Boston cap. And so, you know, the whole weekend we're like, hey, you run in Boston, and how was Boston, just by looking at someone. And so I said to this guy, I'm like, you know, I kind of interrupted him in the middle of his, he was ready to take a bite of Panda Express. Um, did, <laughs> did you run Boston? He said, he said, yeah, I, um, I did Boston, and I said, and... Um, I said, well, how did it go? And he said, it went well. How about you? So he immediately turns the focus to me, and I'm like, yeah, I, I was working hard. I, you know, I got to admit, I, you know, I, I, it was it was blazing hot, and I wanted to give up. I, but I fought for my time, and I finished. And he said, you know what? Anyone who ran that race and finished, um, he said, you did such a good job, and he was really sincere and congratulatory. And and so I look at him and I say, well, you look pretty darn fast to me. So I have a sense that you were you know, one of those front runners. Was he a red bibber? In terms of, he, yeah, he was red. He was, I, said, I, I said, I can tell by how you look, you were a red bib guy. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. And I go, so, um, you know, let me tell you, though. I said, when you guys started out at 10, it was 80 degrees. When I ran it, it was 87. Okay, I just want you to know, it was a lot harder when I was running. So I said to him, so how did you do? And he said, I won. I said, you won the whole thing? Like the whole Boston Marathon? He's like, yeah, I won. Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I am freaking out. I take my suitcase with these gnarly, nasty running clothes. I dump it upside down in the middle of the, the, the food court. I find my running shirt, which I can't even tell you how gross it was, turn it right side out where my bib is. I'm like, sign my bib. Will you sign my bib? <laughs> <laughs> so I, by this time, I've, I've attracted quite a crowd of runners who then come over. But the coolest thing was this probably 10-year-old kid comes over. He looks at the, this guy with such adoration. And he's like, you won Boston? The guy's like, yeah. But it was great. It was great because to meet the winner of Boston is huge. But it also for this guy to be so humble and before he even went to, you know, how is, he, he was so sincere in asking me, you know, how was your race? And saying, that was really great. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's my story. Hey, that's just a phenomenal story. The energy it just even gets better every time you tell it, Michelle. That's only the second time I heard. But uh, I, I may be, uh, you know, hitting you up for that story again in three months. It uh, That <laughs> thing may go. explode. Well, uh Hey, congrats again on being a a, a blue bibber, right? And uh, you know, is next yeah. year going to be because you qualified again for next year? So is that red bib that you qualified for next year? <laughs> Not a chance. I'm, I'm a proud blue bibber. <laughs> oh, you're going to stick with the blue. The blue team uh, wins. I am. I am. They need me. They need me on their team. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for that story. Okay. Awesome job, and uh, thanks for living the run. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Hey, great story there. Uh, you just absolutely amazing, Max. You know, to hear a guy that just won the Boston Marathon and all he wants to do is, is talk to somebody else. And you could tell he just, uh, he loved the fact that people are out there participating in health and fitness. People are out there running and they're running for a variety of reasons out there in Boston. But, uh, yeah, neat, neat story, huh? What's he doing eating? 
What's he doing eating Panda Express? <laughs> That was going to be my next question. Is that the post-game meal? That's a Van McCarty thing. Those of you who heard about Van McCarty ran slow marathon and won that, uh, he talked about his eating habits uh, before a race. One Those- cup of coffee before <laughs> I go. You know, Bob Marley said it best. <laughs> Unbelievable. But then to finish with a little panda, that's uh, absolutely amazing. You know, I've actually been through the Boston airport, and there are quite a few fine restaurants to eat at. So, uh, <laughs> you know, Panda Express just seems bottom of the list kind of material. Oh, for the guy that won it, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Well, hey, uh, we, we got to take a break here, but uh, you're listening to Living the Run. Hey, make sure, guys, to check us out on Facebook.com as well as livingtherun.com. Uh, but uh, stick around. We got a, a, I got a great story about a runner on Johnson Ranch and a snake. Uh, you got to stick around for this one. And then don't, don't miss. We got uh, a big group from Miracle Miles for Kids um, and some just fantastic stories there. So uh, more, more from Living the Run in moments. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio, 1280 The Ticket. Friends tell friends about Perry Ford Lincoln in San Luis Obispo. Here's Angela Biles from San Luis Obispo. At Perry Ford, I just felt instantly comfortable when I walked in. Here's Gus Best from Paso Robles. When I traded in the car here, they gave me the most for my car. In fact, I can honestly say it was $1,000 more than anyone else. Here's Leota Lardner from Templeton. For service, I always come to Perry. I had a small little accident. Perry picked it up, took care of the damages, and returned it back to me. Here's Doug Showalter from Morro Bay. Oh, it was so easy to buy that car. When I came in, everybody at Perry Ford kind of came together and worked the paperwork, and I was in and out of this place very quickly. And here's William Garwood from Lockwood. Even though we live 70 miles away, it's right on the highway. You can get right off the highway, right into the dealership, and it's well worth the trip. For a great experience you'll be telling your friends about, visit Perry Ford Lincoln today on La Sosa Valley Road in San Luis Obispo. Call 544-5200 or click on perryfordslo.com. Hi, it's Colin Coward. Here on the Central Coast, when it comes to insurance, there's only two things you need to remember. Morris and Garitano. Since 1885, they've built a tradition of earning your trust twice, at the time of purchase and the time of need. It's the largest insurance agency headquartered in the county. Morris and Garitano offers a broad range of insurance services to businesses and individuals for all your insurance needs. Health, liability, auto, life, and workers' comp. Only two things you need to remember. Morris and Garitano. The U.S. Open returns to Olympic Club in San Francisco June 11th through the 17th. Witness the game's best players and golf's toughest tests. Tickets can be purchased now at the U.S. Open website. The U.S. Open has sold out 25 years in a row, and this year's championship promises to be no exception. Get your tickets while they're available. The U.S. Open Golf Championship June 11th through the 17th at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. Don't miss a single shot. Purchase your tickets now at usopen.com. That's usopen.com. This is really cool, Dad. Yep, nothing better than camping out under the stars. Do you think there's any bears out here? (laughs) I don't think we have to worry about that. Look, there's the Big Dipper. Wow, cool. At Four Seasons Outfitters, they can help you create an outdoor family adventure. Hey, can we try out my new fishing pool tomorrow? Sure. Hey, want to roast another marshmallow? Oh, yeah. For camping and hiking equipment, for fishing and hunting gear, Four Seasons is your hometown outdoor outfitter. Did you and Grandpa go camping when you were little? We sure did. Did you see any bears? Nope, no bears. You'll find backpacks and tents, freshwater and deep sea fishing equipment, campfire cooking supplies, guns and ammo, everything you'll need for your next outdoor adventure. Hi, guys. Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Mom. So how are my two campers doing? Do you, do you want me to leave the porch light on? Um, maybe, just in case there's a bear. Even if it's in your own backyard. Four Seasons Outfitters, your outdoor adventure headquarters for more than 25 years. 432 High Gara, San Luis Obispo. We're back with Living the Run. Welcome back. Great segment, Max. Unbelievable story from, from Michelle. I wanted to first highlight, uh, don't forget, later in the hour, we're going to be talking Miracle Miles for Kids on Saturday, May 12th. The Family Care Network will host its ninth annual Miracle Miles for Kids. 
10K walk run, a benefit for foster and high needs children and families. That 10K, 6.2 mile race course runs along the water's edge from Morro Rock and Morro Bay to the beautiful Cayucas Pier, one of the most beautiful stretches of beach in California. This unique all sand race will begin at 8.30 a.m. this Saturday, May 12th, with a post race party running from 9 a.m. to noon at the Cayucas Vets Hall parking lot adjacent to the Cayucas Pier. Last year's event attracted over 2,400 participants, vendors, and volunteers. This year, we're looking for more. Hey, I. I got an amazing story before we get to that. I got a story. A guy came in the other day and said he was out running on Johnson Ranch. This was on Monday, I believe. He says he gets towards the end of his run there on the trail, and he sees a four-foot snake coming out of the bushes uh, to just, just laterally to him. He keeps running. The snake gets close, and the snake literally climbs this guy's leg and wraps around it and coils it in mid-stride. Guy's got a snake around his knee as his foot is striking the ground. This is epic. I mean, I can't even imagine the visual on this. Uh, <laughs> both of uh, just a snake doing that, but are you kidding me what this guy must have been thinking? Uh, anyway, he says that he shook his leg. The snake came flying off and uh, went off into the bush. Since when did snakes start uh, climbing up people's legs in mid-stride? <laughs> no, he's getting a little too comfortable with the people <laughs> running through his terrain, that's for sure. Uh, but living the run. That guy is truly living the run. Didn't even stop. Kept on going. A little little shimmy shake, and away it goes. <laughs> Keep that, on mid-stride. That is living the run at its finest. You know, if we could get a picture of that, that would have been phenomenal video. Put that up on Facebook, uh, and that would have uh, had a lot of hits. Hey, let's get back a, a little bit, Max, to some children's health issues. You know, we talk about all these things that we see in health today. Um, you know, in 2006 comparative study, they talked about children in the U.S. being three times more likely to be taking psychiatric medication than in, in, in Europe. Uh, you know, they talk about the explosion of what they call, in quotes, academic steroids, uh, meds for depression, ADD, obesity. Boys today, 30 times more likely than boys from 1987 to be taking these medications. We're talking about kids spending five and a half hours in front of a computer screen every day. Teenagers today, four times more likely to be obese than those of the 60s. 30% of kids you, overweight in the U.S., which is six times greater than in 1980. And, you know, this is the disturbing one to me is that 6% of U.S. high schools today are often offering daily PE classes. You know, we obviously have a problem here uh, with regards to uh, some of these conditions. They seem to be getting worse, and, and our kids are at, at risk here. Uh, just amazing that we're cutting PE out uh, even at the teenage level there. Yeah, 6% is Far too low. Six percent way too low. You know, I heard a uh, there's a group out there right now because they're trying to get kids' academic scores up. There is actually a group out there right now who is trying to eliminate recess uh, from the elementary schools uh, and just have lunch. Uh, they just they they say that they we need more book time to be able to get those scores up to match up with China and India. And you just have to start to wonder when we talk about kids' health. Is this the best thing to do uh, for these kids? You know, I think, well, for one, I think it's a terrible idea. And, and the main reason is that recess time is valuable social interaction time. I mean, kids build a lot of their social circles. They learn a lot of their life lessons in a social standpoint during those times. You learn what to do, what not to do, how to interact with other people and how to make friends, which is one of the most valuable skills you can gain as a human being because being isolated and alone is the big reason that a lot of the depression starts to set in because you don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of and you're stuck in front of your screen 24 hours a day. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's just amazing, you know, when I read for the first time, and I read this a couple years ago, that kids today are now not uh, or expected or predicted to not outlive their parents. And, you know, this is just something that's not happened uh, over the last 100 years. And it just seems as though there may be some things that we can do and, and, and getting people outdoors, like you said, uh, getting kids outdoors, giving them creative outlets, getting them moving uh, to stimulate their nervous systems and their brains seems like a, a great thing to do. And cutting out PE uh, just doesn't seem to do it. In fact, you know, they actually did a study on this at Virginia Tech, and they did cut out gym class. And, uh, you know, what a surprise. It didn't improve test scores. Uh, what, a, what a big surprise there. You know, one of the things I loved was this, this paper they did on uh, – 
uh, a peer review study they, they took in California. They wanted recommendations for schools, and they looked at over 850 papers on this, and they determined that oh, they needed greater than one hour a day of exercise for school children. And check out what happened. We had a decrease in obesity, a decrease in depression, decrease in anxiety, increase in self-esteem, decrease in blood pressure, Increase in bone density, increase in academic performance. And and check out the bonuses, too. The bonus of this thing was is we had a positive influence on memory, concentration, and classroom behavior. This is super cool stuff. Um, and it just seems to me that we need to keep these kids moving. We need to keep them creative. Uh, and uh, if we do that... It should it should seem uh, intuitively obvious that these kids are going to perform better. Yeah, and I mean, exercise. One of the most important things about it is it produces endorphins. It raises endorphin levels, and that's your feel good kind of drug, right there. You know, and and people are talking about needing drugs to keep them happy, but you know, a little bit of exercise goes a long ways towards keeping that up. Uh, I I totally agree. You know, one of the studies I, I loved, I um, saw this study out of. Uh, Naperville uh, Central High School in Chicago. You know, they took these kids, and what they did was is they did a zero-hour PE class. And what they did was is they gave every single kid a heart rate monitor, okay? And uh, they had these on these kids. And what they did was is, is they had the kids run for um, a mile before class or walk, run or walk, and all they had to do was get their heart rate up to 80% of their maximum. They did this every day, and unbelievable, the results for these kids. You know, my favorite result out of the whole thing was is, is that they hadn't, this, they did this in 2000, they hadn't had a fist fight in the school again since 2000. But get this, Naperville High School was down to 3% obesity wow. in the school. Tremendous, tremendous stuff. Um, but you know, the kids describe being less fidgety, less tense, increased feeling of motivation, invigoration. All these things are so positive for our kids. And you know, they've done a ton of studies on this. Uh, one of the, the one of the first ones, October 2000, of, of at least of this uh, century, October 2000 out of Duke University, exercise beat Zoloft for depression. You know, and some of these kids, I get it. Self-esteem, things are tough. School is tough. I mean, imagine Laguna Middle School. <laughs> that place is a circus. <laughs> that place is a circus. But, you know, the reality is, is we get these kids moving. We give them creative outlets. Uh, one step maybe towards uh, getting them healthier. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Hey, uh, is it true that uh, the great Paul Tarek... <laughs> Yeah, it is on the line. Paul Tarek, thanks for joining us. Hey, man, thanks for having me back, even though I couldn't be in the studio. <laughs> hey, how, how are babysitting duties going it's there? Good. Being Mr. Mom, I'll tell you what, man. I, I, if it wasn't for women, I, the, the human gener- the human uh, species would last one generation. <laughs> and man, if it wasn't for my wife, I don't know, I feel so bad for my son. <laughs> I do. Well, we're talking, so, we're talking ki- kids' health here. Uh, uh, how is that uh, little guy? My, well, I just heard what you were talking about, uh, you know, the kids need to be active an hour a day. And, you know, that's good because my kid's active for about 18 hours a day, uh, you know, starting at, at about, you know, 4.30 in the morning and ending at about 2.30 in the morning. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, you're, you're totally right. I mean, it's, it's funny that they have to have some sort of government study and tax dollars have to be wasted to find out uh, that, oh, man, our, our kids need to exercise. Hey, we got to stop feeding them chicken nuggets. Uh, it's, it's so funny that, that they go through this study. But then the downfall is, and you know it, they're going to try to standardize some sort of uh, workout routine. And, and again, that's, while better than nothing, is, is you know probably not the solution either. Yeah, you know, that's why I love that study with the heart rate monitors, Paul, because what it did was it, it took away from competition and um, and big kids had to compete with themselves rather than with each other. And, uh, hey, I mean, you know how it is, Paul. You were yeah. always faster than everybody else, right, out there on the track. Nobody wanted, yeah. to, run ag- nobody wanted to run against you. Yeah, yeah, right up, right up until uh, right up until uh, high school graduation, and then after that, I kind of slid backwards. You know? <laughs> wasn't I was wasn't the fastest guy? But no, um, you know, actually, I wanted to go back and actually talk about something. Sorry to totally change subjects, but early on the show, you guys were talking about medication and how that's kind of the solution to things, and you're just telling people to, to get involved with their own bodies, and, and I think it ties into you know activities in childhood and getting kids early, you know, used to early. Uh, working out and, uh, you know, being in touch with their body and knowing how, not so much self-diagnose and self-medicate themselves, but knowing, you know, what the problem is and knowing that if they go to a doctor, not just to listen blindly to what he says, you know, it's, we only have one body and we only have one go at it. And, and it, you know, you talk to so many 30 and 40 year old people that have like, oh, you know, I've had this arm problem for like 10 years. What's wrong with it? I don't know. 
You know, and it's like, <laughs> well, have you seen anybody? Ah, I saw a guy a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, he, yeah, he couldn't fix it. I'm like, okay, what else you do? Nothing. I'm like, well, good solution. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's yeah. about well, but it's about getting uh, educated. That's what we're trying to do here on Living the Run. You know, Paul, with the both the uh, the website, the Facebook, as well as the show, is is how do we get educated? And the, the reality is, is here in this community, we are a privileged community. Um, oh yeah, at, at, by far, we've got so many resources for great foods, local foods, organic foods. Uh, we have some uh, incredible opportunities for outdoor activities, uh, from the hills to the beach, and uh, you know, I just think that uh, we we are in a, a zone here that is uh, not like many zones and so we've, we've got to be able to get some of these people that don't have the resources we have to be able to figure out how to use the resources in their area uh, to get going and uh, you know some kids Paul just don't have those resources and that's why we're bringing in Jamie Baker right now uh, from the Family Care Network uh, he's the Community Resources Development Director there. Family Care Network uh, is the largest uh, child and family service agency on the Central Coast and for 25 years has been serving foster and high-needs kids in our community. Uh, Miracle Miles for Kids is the largest fundraiser of the year for Family Care Network, attracting runners from eight states and 160 cities each year. And, you know, Jamie, you, you, you've been in front of a ton of kids now that just simply don't have some of the privileges uh, that my sons do, or Paul, or or, or some of these other kids, and uh, just what a, what an incredible um, uh, business Family Care Network or nonprofit their Family Care Network is, and, and what they're trying to do. Tell us a little bit about you know the history of uh, Family Care Network, and you know where you guys are going here in the future. Oh well, thanks. First, thanks for having me here, Rick. Oh, thanks. absolutely. Uh, Family Care Network, as you said, has been around for twenty five years. Uh, started by Jim Roberts, um, and it was to address. You know, kids getting to a certain point and not really getting the help they needed to get over to that next step. So Family Care Network comes in. We have an array of like 17 services, 17 programs that we um, try to address the needs that the kids kids have, work with the families, and try to put everything back together, get the kid moving towards self-sufficiency. Mm. And we, uh, one of the great things about working Family Care Network, when we set our outcomes, we work against certain benchmarks, we have about a 94% success rate. Fantastic. What are some of those benchmarks that you guys are looking at and uh, how you go through that evaluation? Well, each program has its own set of, of outcomes and what expectations that once a child comes into our care that we sort of set forth those those benchmarks. And then while the child is receiving services, we sort of evaluate on, on a weekly basis the progress that that child, that family is making. And um, let's say for our transitional age youth who are 18, 21, you know, we sort of have a time period that we are gauged against those those outcomes, and that's we you know look at it every week. You know, you guys, uh, living the run listeners, you are listening to Jamie Baker from Family Care Network. Uh, May twelfth, we are going to see Miracle Miles for Kids. How did that whole thing get started, Miracle Miles for Kids? And uh, geez, what a, it's just a genius idea, a fun run, a beautiful run. Uh, how to get started, and uh, you know, they give us a, some of the evolution of that. It, it is an incredible day, and it was actually started nine years ago by a staff member at Family Care Network and wanted to do something, some type of fundraiser to bring families and kids together and just came up with this brilliant idea. You know, what's a beautiful place to run? Morro Bay, Cayucas Pier, you know, 10K. It just all of a sudden when you start putting those pieces together, it's like it turns into paradise. It turns into a wonderful idea. You just continue to build on it and build on it, and it's about families helping families, kids helping kids doing something really great on this day, bringing a lot of awareness, um, bringing it, you know, the issue of foster care, kids who are in, in our community who need our help, having this one day where we just think about that. How can we do that? How can we you know, raise money to to bring these kids to, to the level to where they need to be? Well, it essentially sounds like what you're saying, Jamie. How, how can we get them to live the run? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, real quick before uh, before we bring in a, a couple great stories uh, of, of participants in there, um, if people can't make the run, how can they uh, contribute or be a part of uh, Family Care Network's uh, community or of, of the Miracle Miles for Kids? Uh, well, the best thing is to go to mm4k.com, read the stories, read how you can get involved with Family Care Network, how you can participate in this event even if you can't run it. Um, there are people who register, and then they set up pledge pages, and they tell their story of why they are running. And later on, you'll hear two stories about why people are running, and they're pretty compelling. And you can go onto their page, and if you're, and if you feel, the, if it grabs your heart, and you want to give ten dollars, you want to give twenty-five dollars to their cause. 
that's what you do. You just sign it up right there, and uh, everything everything matters. Jamie, thanks so much. And uh, listeners, for sure, you're going to want to stick around. You you are going to have your heart grabbed. There's a, a great story uh, coming up next from a Miracle Miles uh, participant uh, back in moments. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio 1280 The Ticket. I sold suits, men's suits, for 19 years. The moment I could uh, access the retirement plan, it, I just became firm about it. I'm done. I'm out of here. This is Mujahid Abdul Rashid on his first day of retirement. You know, I've been working since I was about 16. Uh, and now I get the chance to spend more time with my wife and my kids. Ah, it gives me a reason to be here. You know, it, uh, it's my world. That's my world. This is day one, the first of over 6,000 days most of us will enjoy in retirement. At Prudential, we create retirement solutions and partner with financial professionals everywhere to make sure you're ready for every one of them. Prudential, bring your challenges. Contact your financial professional today to learn more. Prudential Financial Incorporated, Newark, New Jersey. In a world full of artificial this, genetically modified that, and virtually simulated everything, there's thankfully still an appreciation for the real deal. I'm referring, of course, to the BMW 3 Series, the one car and driver named to their 10 best list a record-breaking 20 consecutive years, the one that's faster and more powerful than the A4, the C300, and the IS250, the one that includes no-cost maintenance while those others do not, and the only one that deserves to be called the ultimate driving machine. So celebrate the real deal. The 3 Series at a BMW Center today. Claim based on published 3 Series sedan and competitors 0 to 16 horsepower. For ultimate service details, call 1-888-3114-BMW. Come purchase one today at BMW of Santa Maria, the Highline dealer on the Central Coast. Online at BMWSM.com. Michelob Ultra asked, what's your ultra life? Climate pyramids in Guatemala. We got married in the run-through wedding chapel. A zip line ride over a 400-foot canyon. About 25 feet from me was a black bear. The ultra life is different for everyone, but there's one common thread. It's about getting out and having fun. So come on. And Michelob Ultra helps you do just that. With one exceptional and smooth taste, only 95 calories and 2.6 carbs, Michelob Ultra is perfectly balanced to fit your life and all you want to get out of it. What's your ultra life? Tell us on Facebook.com slash Michelob Ultra and live life to the ultra. Here's Wes from Chicago. Every year, 16 of my college buddies get together for a golf bonanza. And Amy from San Diego. I just recently hiked the Grand Canyon. So come Enjoy responsibly. Michelob Ultra Light Beer. 95 calories, 2.6 grams carbs, 0.6 grams protein, and 0 grams fat for 12-ounce serving. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. We're back with Living the Run. We are back on Living the Run. It's been a great show thus far. We are currently talking Miracle Miles for Kids. Uh, if you don't know about this event, Miracle Miles for Kids will be on Saturday, May 12th. Family Care Network will host its ninth annual Miracle Miles for Kids, a 10K walk run benefit for foster and high needs children and families. This 10K, 6.2 mile race course runs along the water's edge from Morro Rock and Morro Bay to the Cayucas Pier, one of the most beautiful stretches of beach in California. Unique all-sand race will begin at 8.30 on Saturday, May 12th, with the post-race party running from 9 a.m. to noon at the Cayucas Vets Hall. Last year's event attracted over 2,400 participants, vendors, and volunteers. Hey, I'm with the guy that's been involved with uh, um, uh, Family Care Network and Miracle Miles for Kids for years now. You guys, a lot of you probably know him. Uh, fitness fanatics love this guy Ryan Joiner, owner and founder of Athlon Fitness and Performance. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Hey, Ryan, tell us a little bit about uh, your history with Family Care Network uh, and Miracle Miles for Kids. Why you got involved and uh, what you've been doing since? 
but we were just talking about it out uh, in the other room. I, I can't remember if it was the first one in 04 or the second one in 05 that I did the actual warm-up for up on the, uh, the cliff and uh, <clears throat> had to wear the headset and act like an aerobics instructor. And <laughs> that, was a little, that was a little embarrassing, so I haven't been back since then for that. But I've been involved with it every year since, and we've always put a team together at Athlon and been supportive, and I have a number of friends and uh, good friends that work there at Family Care Network. So it's been a, uh, uh, yeah, and obviously it's an amazing charity, and they do great work. And so, you, I mean, how could you not want to support that? So, yeah, we've been involved every year since in one way or another, and uh, actually even did um, did a uh, kind of a, a health presentation one year leading up to it to, to help people get healthy and train for it. And so, yeah, we've found different ways of getting involved. Great. What, what's the uh, what's the event meant to you? Um, you know, why has it struck a chord with you? I mean, we we're bombarded by a, a whole bunch of events all the time. People coming to us and uh, asking us to participate this or that. But obviously, this thing struck a chord with you. You know, you you did it the first time and you've stuck with it. Uh, give us a little something on along those lines. Yeah, sure. Two, uh, <clears throat> probably two things. Uh, one is again the the. The Family Care Network and the event itself, I mean, where else would you want to spend the Saturday but in some of the most beautiful beach, you know, on earth as far as I'm concerned. Um, and what I always say is uh, there's two things that go on here that are my favorite things to be a part of. One is the Blues Festival and the other is Miracle Miles because both bring about 2,500 of your best fun people in San Luis County out for the day to party and have a good time. And, and it's just a great event to be involved in. And then not only that, you're raising money for an amazing cause, you know, so you just you can't go wrong. Hey, you hit it right on the head. That's a living the run motto, a happier and healthier community. Uh, seems like a great thing. Hey, let me bring in Danielle here real quick. Uh, Danielle's been working at Family Care Network. She says going on five years, says she's a member of the B Squad and is a participant <laughs> And, you know, the big thing about Danielle is, is she's one of the top fundraisers. Danielle, you got to answer this. What in the world is the B Squad? <laughs> so uh, I'm a case manager at Family Care Network for, it's called Therapeutic Behavioral Services. So it's one of our 17 behavioral support programs that we have. And uh, one of my coworkers, Daniel Carlisle, actually came up with the B Squad to represent TBS. 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 Well, you know, we were talking about blue bibs and red bibs earlier. I thought maybe it had something to do with a bib, but uh, apparently nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Uh, there's a lot of, there's different programs, and we're all kind of competing against each other at Family Care to raise the most money. So right now, I think we might be in the lead just by a smidgen, but we are in the lead, and that's the important part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all fitness uh, fitness folks and uh, people in, involved in athletics and exercise and, and just trying to get healthier, they often have that inner drive, that, that desire to be competitive. Obviously, you have that as, as you're trying to become one of those top <laughs> fundraisers. What is it about this program that fuels you to go so hard to raise that extra dollar and then may, maybe claim victory this year on that? That is the plan. <laughs> Jamie's shaking his head behind us. He's uh, he, he's not going for that. But uh, you know what's driving you uh, to to do that? You know, I've worked for Family Care Network for almost five years now, and I just see how the the power of behavioral support can transform the lives of kids and families in our community. And it's been a great organization to work for. And you know, like uh, previously said, that it's just a great place to be. It's a great place to work. And um, I think that was my motivation this year. I've participated the last five years running or volunteering the event, and this is the first year I've actually raised money. Um, so it's just a great way for us to get the word out, and it's been fun competing against my coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Re hey, Rex, I got a question for you. Is it the, uh, is the competitiveness uh, only in raising money, or are they going to get out there and run in the sand as well? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, who's going to win that race? Me. <laughs> <laughs> No, hands down, she didn't even think about it. No, <laughs> yeah, man. you know what? She didn't even look at Ryan. She didn't even consider him as a uh, potential uh, competitor <laughs> in this thing. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Apparently, it's her show, and that's it. He's just here to spectate. <laughs> Ab yeah, apparently. I mean, I'm looking at this guy. He's as fit as it comes, Paul, and uh, I got to think he's got a chance in this thing. But you're the only one because she doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's mindset, Paul. It's all about mindset. Hey, let me bring in, uh, this is an incredible uh, story here, uh, heartwarming uh, for sure. You guys are going to love this one. Heather, uh, a past participant from Miracle Miles for Kids. Uh, she is running this year in honor of her brother. We're going to have her tell that story. She's fundraising like crazy, but here's the kicker on this. Seven months pregnant, right? I'll be eight uh, months along by the time we get to the race next week. 
<laughs> eight months pregnant, Paul. Uh, that, that, don't don't compete with her. I know. Well, that'll be like that was at the Chicago Marathon. The lady basically finished her marathon and just jogged on over to the hospital. And I don't plan baby. on giving birth afterwards <laughs> <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you really had much choice when the baby's like, you know what, I'm pretty tired. I'm coming out. Yeah, Heather's hoping for at least a two, three-week reprieve yes. post-race. Hey, Heather, tell us that story about your brother. Um, my brother was 25 years old. He was a slow county native, um, lived here his whole life, and moved away to Maui uh, to live every young guy's dream and uh, was killed in a motorcycle accident last November, and uh, we've had a really, my family and I have had a really rough patch with that, but we decided to take something negative and turn it into a positive, so this year we're raising money in his honor because uh, family was everything to him, and he always dreamed of adopting a baby. He used to tell my mom when he was little that he didn't need a wife, he was going to adopt a baby, so uh, he never got to do that, so we thought that the Family Care Network would be a great um, a great cause to raise money in his honor this year. Hmm. It's uh sounds like an amazing, amazing guy. Um, you know, why'd you choose uh, Miracle Miles for Kids, uh, Family Care Network in, in this case? I know you guys probably had some different things you were thinking about uh, tossing around to honor your brother. Uh, why this event? And um... Um, Well, this event, you know, the money stays local, which I really like. And um, I'm all like, uh, I've been running since high school uh, cross country. I'm not necessarily fast, but I've done a lot of 10Ks. And um, it's a nice event where my whole family can take part. My parents are going to be walking it. Um, I have a lot of my brother's friends are going to come out and wear his bandanas and T-shirts. And they're going to be, some will be walking, some will be jogging, some will be walking and jogging. So it's just a nice family event for our local community. You know, it's the money all yeah. stays local. Hey, Rex, I think, you know, that, that's a perfect example of what you were talking about earlier uh, with, with you know, San Luis and San Luis County being just at the forefront for, for you know, everybody's involved. You know, it's a, it's a family thing. It's not like she just goes out, runs, and then comes home. You know, the whole family's involved, the community's involved. And uh, if you can't get involved in fitness around here, then, you know, it's not even that you're not trying hard enough. You're, you're actually trying to avoid it, I think. Yeah, I think you're kind of right there, Paul. And, uh, you know, it's events like this that make us – uh, look at these things and say, hey, it's, it's not necessarily about who's winning that race. We can joke about that and we can have a fun time and give our best effort. But the reality is is that uh, these folks in here and, and Heather's family is going to win the, that race uh, this uh, on May 12th. You know, getting together, uh, spiritually coming together uh, in a physical event, but, uh, you know, just just bonding in love. Uh, and support and, and and you're right, Paul. I mean, this is just a, a perfect place to do it, and uh, it's so special to hear stories like this. Thank you. Thanks, Heather, uh, Danielle, and Ryan, uh, Jamie. Uh, you guys are awesome. It's an inspiration. We will tr continue to try to push to get people out there, at the very least, to be supporting, cheering you guys on. And folks, if you can't come out and cheer an eight-month pregnant. <laughs> girl uh running this race uh come on get out of the house come see along the coastline it's going to be phenomenal and hey, one more yeah, time rex, what rex, was the you, go ahead go ahead oh, so, i was going to say rex man even if they're not going to come out to cheer i mean if there's an eight month pregnant woman running the race you got to just come out because you never know just in case you know <laughs> you never know just in case what you might see hey, one absolutely more time. one more time the what, website what is the website people can see and learn more about this um the miracle miles website mm -hmm. Uh, the website is mm4k.com. It's the letters mm, the number 4, k.com. mm4k.com. Look it up. Support. Come out May 12th. Uh, we'll, we'll conclude in moments on Living the Run. You're listening to Living the Run on ESPN Radio 1280 The Ticket. Friends tell friends about Perry Ford Lincoln in San Luis Obispo. Here's Angela Biles from San Luis Obispo. At Perry Ford, I just felt instantly comfortable when I walked in. Here's Gus Bess from Paso Robles. When I traded in the car here, they gave me the most for my car. In fact, I can honestly say it was $1,000 more than anyone else. Here's Leota Lardner from Templeton. For service, I always come to Perry. I had a small little accident. Perry picked it up, took care of the damages, and returned it back to me. Here's Doug Showalter from Morro Bay. Oh, it was 
so easy to buy that car. When I came in, everybody at Perry Ford kind of came together and worked the paperwork, and I was in and out of this place very quickly. And here's William Garwood from Lockwood. Even though we live 70 miles away, it's right on the highway. You can get right off the highway, right into the dealership, and it's well worth the trip. For a great experience you'll be telling your friends about, visit Perry Ford Lincoln today on the Sosas Valley Road in San Luis Obispo. Call 544-5200 or click on PerryFordSLO.com. Hi, it's Colin Coward. Here on the Central Coast, when it comes to insurance, there's only two things you need to remember. Morris and Garitano. Since 1885, they've built a tradition of earning your trust twice. At the time of purchase and the time of need. It's the largest insurance agency headquartered in the county. Morris and Garitano offers a broad range of insurance services to businesses and individuals for all your insurance needs. Health, liability, auto, life, and workers' comp. Only two things you need to remember. Morris and Garitano. U.S. Open returns to Olympic Club in San Francisco, June 11th through the... We're back with Living the Run. Hey, welcome back. This is back. my parents' Mercedes M-Class. Welcome back to Living the Run. Tremendous show today, Paul, uh, Max. We had a, just a, a great time, an tr- incredible interview from Michelle in Boston, a super fun experience for her. Miracle Miles for Kids, guys, Saturday, May 12th, uh, put on by the Family Care Network. is going to be an incredible event. Uh, what a special, special interview with Heather, uh, eight months pregnant, getting ready to get out there and run in, in honor of her brother. Um, just just fun, fun stuff, and it, it's why uh, we, we do this show, Paul. Great time. It- yeah, I think, uh, you know, like you said, you know, it's a family event. It brings everybody out there. And really, uh, you know, three, four years from now, who's going to talk about the Saturday that you guys all just did your own thing and hung out at home? Uh, when you can talk about the time you went out, watched uh, Aunt So-and-So or Mom and Dad run this race together, and you supported a great cause. Absolutely. You know, give, give me a, let's go through real quick, tips and takeaways. What can we take away from uh, today's show and uh, maybe implement uh, uh, this next week to improve our health and, uh, and happiness? I mean, I, Personally, I would take away just being aware of your body and, and starting to take, you know, it's the only one you have, really starting to pay attention to it. And, you know, don't just listen to the doctor. Don't just watch a, a, a commercial on television where they're advertising some drug and say, man, those are symptoms like I have. I need that drug. You know, it's not, drugs aren't going to fix it all. You know, you got you to gotta be in tune and start figuring that thing out. And the sooner you start figuring your body out, the better life's going to be. Great advice, Paul. Max? got to be a kid to get outside and exercise you know there's lots of ways to exercise other than the what people term as the exhausting run or something like that you know you can play basketball kick a soccer ball around but you know just get outside get away from the screen absolutely i'm right there with you max it's about uh, getting aware getting our kids creative getting them outside getting them moving starting to pay attention what a tremendous place we live here on the central coast in san luis obispo uh farmers markets everywhere food co-ops um, just mountains to climb, beaches to stroll, a really, really tremendous atmosphere. Well, hey, guys, catch us on uh, livingtherun.com, facebook.com. If you missed any part of the show, pick us up there. Uh, we will be back next week uh, talking wildflower with the Wildflower winners. Hey, remember, your health is in your hands. Come join us. Come live the run.